Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, March 24. On this date in 1991, WWE held its WrestleMania 7 pay-per-view. In the main event, Hulk Hogan defeated Sergeant Slaughter to win the World Wrestling Federation Championship. On this date in 1996, WCW held its uncensored pay-per-view. In the main event, Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage defeated Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Meng, The Barbarian, Lex Luger, Z Gangsta, The Ultimate Solution, and Kevin Sullivan in a doomsday cage match. On this date in 2008, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Columbia, South Carolina. In the main event, John Cena, Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H defeated John Bradshaw Layfield, Randy Orton, The Big Show, and Umaga in a no-disqualification eight-man tag team match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, March 24. Hi, this is Jim Cornette, and you're listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry on 1490 WBCB. Thank you, James E. Cornette. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. A couple of little notes and tidbits from uh, from the Today in Wrestling history. Of course, WrestleMania 7 occurring on this date 21 years ago. Wow. At, from the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. They were, well, they were going to have in the Memorial Coliseum, but... Uh, well, depending on who you ask, they either didn't sell enough tickets or there was an alleged bomb threat that day, so they had to move it to the smaller venue that only held about 16,000 people. Yet they were hoping to go for 100,000. I don't know. I guess by that point, Hulkamania was slowing to a crawl, and uh, not as many people were turning up into the seats. And uh, speaking of Hogan, that infamous two-on-eight doomsday cage match with the uh, Z Gangsta, who you might remember as Zeus, and, of course, uh, the ultimate solution, which uh, somebody uh, down at Ted Turner Brass didn't uh, quite have things figured out because the initial name for that character was the final solution. Apparently, there weren't too many World War II experts there because, uh, and I didn't know this either until I looked it up, but apparently the final solution was what uh, Hitler had referred to, uh, you know, as, as far as his elimination of the Jews and all that. Nobody picked up on that before coming out with the character. And next thing you know, angry letters and phone calls aplenty to Ted Turner and the WCW brass. So that's why they changed the name to the ultimate solution, all part of the alliance to end Hulkamania from back in 1996. Just, just a couple. I don't know. Little, little tidbits to to throw out there. Little things that I found out as I was getting all this information together. And wow, information news aplenty, gentlemen. Uh, of course, well, the the big news here locally in Philadelphia, of course, with Raw being here earlier in the day. John Cena was doing some uh, media rounds and got uh, into a slight fender bender that ended up making it seem like it was much more serious than it was. There weren't any injuries, but a tractor trailer running into a Honda Civic, and then that Honda Civic that got totaled ended up, uh, you know, damaging the back fender of the SUV that Cena was riding in, and he wasn't the driver either. So, I don't know. Much ado about, well, I shouldn't say nothing, because the, whoever that Honda Civic is, they're pretty miffed at this point, I'd imagine. Uh, what other, uh, what, I was going to say so much. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier, uh, former ECW champion Shane Douglas. He, uh, he tried to generate some publicity at Raw for, uh, the Extreme Reunion promotion coming up, uh, near the end of April. Of course, that's going to be at the, uh, Pennsylvania Guard Armory, right, uh, just outside Ben Salem into the beginning of Northeast Philly, right there at, uh, Oh, what is that? That's uh, is that Byberry in the Boulevard or Somerton in the Boulevard? Som- no, no, Somerton's a little further down. Yeah, Red Lion, a uh, little before Red Lion, uh, right down that way. You know where the, the, the guard armory is. If you don't, uh, I'm sure we'll have that up somewhere. But, uh, yeah, during the, uh, the big, show, uh, big Show match that, of course, uh, Cody Rhodes got involved in, Big Show against Kane. Uh, Douglas was in the crowd, wore a blue luchador mask and a white T-shirt, stood up during the match, removed the shirt to reveal his franchise T-shirt, and then removed the mask and was uh, quickly escorted off camera by security. Interesting little publicity stunt. I mean, it's got us talking about it. That's true. Say, you can chime in any point here. I just feel like I'm ra- <laughs> I, I'm used to rambling on my own when there's nobody here. I figure, we don't yeah, want to I, interrupt the process. No, hey, don't, please interrupt me or I will okay. just ramble incessantly for the entire show and nobody, trust me, should be put through that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
No. It's happened before. It's an awful, awful thing. Uh, and also a huge rumor that WWE has been uh, uh, clamoring to try to shut down and uh, Triple H issuing a statement on it on the WWE website regard, uh, regarding an unreliable online news source report that the company was shutting down the, uh, the their kind of minor league territory, in a sense, Florida Championship Wrestling. Quote, it is absolutely not true. FCW is not closing. I don't know how that rumor got started, but I believe it's a situation where the dirt sheets want to believe they have the scoop on everything. If anything, we are in the process of ramping up our entire developmental system. It is the lifeblood of our company. It's what feeds our future, and in no way are we going to close it down. There are plans in the works, but nothing definitive I can discuss right now. Shortly after WrestleMania, there will be a major announcement about our developmental system. Uh, WWE developmental system is being revamped, not shut down. If anything, it's going to get bigger and better than ever. WWE developmental cultivates the future talent of WWE. By no means is it going to get smaller or shut down. Unless you give all of those people in developmental half pushes, kind of have them creep up to the glass ceiling, bump their head and fall back down again, as we've seen to see or seem to see over the course of the last couple of years with, uh, let's count the names, Jack Swagger, uh, Kofi Kingston. It's just a Team Teddy versus Team yeah. Lorna. Pretty much everybody yeah. in the Team yeah. Teddy against... Or who would have been in the Money in the Bank match every year. It's the same yeah. people. Point. It's the yeah. rotation. Of the, you're, yeah. No, no, hardly anyone's really broken that glass ceiling. Even if they've won the title, then they've kind of just become fodder to, uh, to John Cena or Randy Orton, and then they're back on the bottom of the pecking order. Who would know that at this point better than Miz? Right. Yeah, that's true. And that's a big Headline, disappointment. Yeah. I think the Miz deserved to be in a main match at WrestleMania. And, and there's a strong possibility he may not even get on the card, which, yeah. as he even referenced this past week, is a bigger drop-off than King Kong Bundy from WrestleMania's <laughs> 2-3. to three, Going from the main event in a cage match against Hulk Hogan to a, a six-person tag against Hillbilly Jim and uh, four little wrestlers. But that was a good I match, though. I like that match. Well, it was a fun match. I mean, that was a fun match on a, a great WrestleMania yeah. three card. I yeah. mean, that was yeah, probably yeah, top five all time yeah. as far as cards. Yeah. And speaking of cards, let's go ahead and take a look at the WrestleMania lineup, get my predictions certain to go wrong. All right, we've got, at least at this point, I would imagine they may sneak another one in or they may do an unadvertised match with eight matches for a four-hour pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah they're going to sneak something in. Either that or we're going to see a lot of video packages, one or the probably. other. And well, first of all, the one that will probably have people running to the concession stands, and it will probably be the one right before the main event, as they tend to do with the Divas. The, uh, the, the celebrity involvement, uh, Kelly Kelly and uh, Maria Menounos of Extra against... Beth Phoenix and Eve Torres. It's a celebrity. The celebrity usually wins at these things, so I got to go Kelly Kelly and Maria Menounos just for that. I, I mean, agree. we saw that with Snooki last year. I mean, we've seen that in the past with Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> I mean, going all the way back to. I've made more WrestleMania 11 references <laughs> than I probably should, and yet I don't think I've made a single one for 12, which, I mean, it had the Iron Man match that everybody talks yeah. about. And yeah, I. I, yeah. I <laughs> Eleven had Jacob and Eli Blue, which was great. Yes, team. it did against the uh, the very short lived team. I don't, although I don't think they were called it yet of the Allied Powers. Yes, oh, yes. The late British Bulldog and uh, and Lex Luger. <laughs> Still, that is that is good WrestleMania, WrestleMania 11, right 11 knowledge. Oh, yeah, my, like I that. hope not. <laughs> Special coming up. That's where I throw in. Uh, I will throw in the towel at that point. We'll have to we'll have to talk things like Nick Tuturo and Jonathan Taylor yeah. Thomas. Wow, oh, Nick Tuturo. <laughs> <laughs> Where they play, he was playing. Uh, JTT was playing chess with uh, Bob Backlund. With Mr. Right? Bob yeah. Backlund, yeah. yes. Oh man, okay. But the capital of the yeah, Tegucigalpa, yeah, that whole. Oh my gosh. Why do you know this? <laughs> I, 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 you have to know these things when you host a pro wrestling talk show. Okay. That's All my right. story, and I'm sticking yes. with it. All right, the rest of the lineup here. You got Randy Orton against Kane in a match that I don't even think Randy Orton or Kane care about. No. And that's a shame, because both of them, as Richie was saying earlier, are, are great talents, and they've just kind of been, they, this has been thrown together, really, and you can tell neither of their hearts are really into it. But, hey, it's a payday, it's a living. I'm going to go with Orton... Just because, I agree. Why? Why not? Yep. We agree on this. That's as well. that's kind of a, yeah. That, I could have flipped a coin on that if yeah. I really wanted to. <laughs> Team Teddy against Team Johnny, the uh, the twelve man tag. 
Not even going to run through all the names. I think just because, you know, there's so much love for Johnny Ace, we're going to be seeing him twice a week now. I think Team Johnny is going to win. Looks like it has a little bit more star power, too. Yeah, plus I think what's going to happen is um, we're going to see a heel turn. I think uh, Zack Ryder is going to go bad and uh, switch to Team Johnny at the end. You know it. Yeah, not wooing. Not even a little bit. All right. No woo. No woo. You know it is enough. Maybe at the end. I doubt it. (laughs) Cody Rhodes against the Big Show for the Intercontinental Championship. I think Rhodes is going to retain here, adding prestige to my favorite white belt. And one of my favorite wrestlers. I've been a longtime trumpeter and supporter of Cody Rhodes, so that hasn't really changed here. Plus, it adds to the legacy of Big Show's uh, less than stellar WrestleMania record, which I think rivals that of only Tito Santana. (laughs) You could woo for this, too. WrestleMania, woo! When they showed the Big Show at WWE. Oh, New yeah, York, the, yeah, New the, the, the yeah. New York, uh, yeah, no. the, 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 the then horror. called The World, yeah, I think. The, yes, oh. yes, yes. I was there once, and it, it, it was okay. It didn't win you over? It was all right. I just, you know, I mean, there's so much else going on in Times Square, and I think, you mm-hmm. know, great location, but, you know, they needed a little right. bit more to hook people in. That might have been one of those where they had the a couple People's Sunday there. That was the only thing I remember. The, the People's Sunday. It was oh, quite tasty, goodness. Bill Melody. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that after, uh, after we quick run through the rest of these. And then, of course, the four that people are, well, the three and a half that people are talking about. Daniel Bryan and Sheamus uh, for the World Championship. I've got Daniel Bryan retaining here, which I know is kind of odd because, you know, what is it? What do they throw that stat out there? 70% of uh, Rumble winners go on to win the title at WrestleMania. I think they're going to, you know, make the odds a little bit more even so it doesn't seem like a gimme. Plus, I'm going they can keep this feud going here. Yeah, disagreeance for I'm, once. I'm disagreeing with you as well. Yeah. Dana well Ryan that's why they're my predictions yeah. certain to go wrong. <laughs> yep. and that a- is exactly AJ will get why. involved somehow. Brian's oh, definitely course. a great heel. And, you know, he's getting better on the mic and everything. But, yeah, shame it's in this one. Well, I, I, I think Brian retaining also adds to the chase, and it gives you a great rematch for Extreme Rules. Good point. So yeah. that that's, yeah, there's actual justification as to why yes. I'm picking this. Yeah. All right, Punk and Jericho. I think Jericho is going to win here, and that's going to lead to Punk chasing for the title and possibly getting it back at Extreme Rules in his hometown. Seems to make sense that it's going to be in Chicago, plus the involvement of all the family members that just kind of... It doesn't make sense for him to go in as the champion for that, so it's probably one of those where he'll lose it here just to win it back at Extreme Rules. Triple H and The Undertaker, Hell in a Cell, Shawn Michaels is the guest referee. I think Taker goes 20-0. and 0. Taker, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, I, I would hope that Triple H, again, knowing what's best for business as opposed to what's best for his ego, yeah. I, right. I would think he lets Taker ride off into the sunset, even if it's on a stretcher like last year. And finally, Rock and Cena... I think Cena, just because The Rock has nothing really to gain from it. I mean, The Rock has won and lost so many times and obviously is still pretty much unscathed. And Cena could obviously use this to build a little bit of momentum. And this is this will essentially be, you'll be hearing the time is now as opposed to Real American. And that's kind of what Vince loves going for at the end of pretty much WrestleMania is the top guy. You know, posing on the ropes, fireworks, the whole deal. With this theme Rock in the background. Yeah, with the theme in the yeah. background. No, yeah, I, exactly. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Seen all the way on that one. So there they are. Yeah. Manunos and Kelly Kelly, Randy Orton. I've got Team Johnny, Cody Rhodes, Daniel Bryan, Chris Jericho, The Taker, and John Cena. And Flo Rida. Yes, and Flo Rida. And... Wow, my apologies to Ed because we got to get rolling. I did not realize. This is how crazy the top of the hour gets. We're already there. It's WrestleMania. It is. It's WrestleMania. Stay tuned. Two weeks. We'll be back. We'll go over everything that went on with WrestleMania and look our way as we get a little bit closer to lockdown because that's coming up a few weeks after we're back as well. And from we'll have more damage news next time. Yeah, more damage news next time. I know this, this has been a crazy. We could have easily gone two hours here Definitely. this week. That's how much was going on. Stay tuned. Bill Melody's next here on 1490 WBCB.